I watched people around the world say what a great guitar player Kirk is and what a piece of shit I am and that I uh, got kicked out of Metallica and that I wasn't good enough for them and that I was a loser and and I've had to deal with that for almost 20 years and it's, it's a dreadful experience it's been hard Lars it's been hard to watch Everything that you guys do and you touch turn to gold and everything I do fucking backfire. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that they would consider my backfire complete success. You know, and, and am I happy being number two? No. You know, you're just now encountering something I've been going through 13, 14 years. I've never had a chance to be able to tell you without talking to Lars, the guy in Metallica. Never talked to my little Danish friend again. You know? I remember the day you and I talked about digging a hole in fucking dirt and smoking hash through the ground. That, to me, is the, the stuff that's like... You know? And we've never had very many moments like that. Do I feel some guilt? Uh, yes, I do. But at the same time, it's difficult for me to comprehend that the only thing that you feel when you look back on the last 20 years is rooted in the Metallica thing. Okay. Have you ever thought what, what I've been through? I think I've had an awareness of the pain I caused you. Um, That's not what I said. Okay. Um, do you have any idea of what I put you through? What, no, no, no. What I went through. I mean, people hate me because of you. You know, I, I walk down the street and I hear some piece of shit say, Metallica at me, and they do that to taunt me. I mean, when I would hear Metallica on the radio, I would be like, God, I have to turn this off because I just keep thinking, I fucked up. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. You know, and by no means is it done because somebody else very important is not here. Right. Do I wish it was 1982 all over again and you guys woke me up and say, hey, Dave, you know what? You need to go to AA. Yeah. I'd give anything for that chance. Is there any last words you want to say to everybody out there? Metal up your ass! <laughs> okay, thank you. This is Donna Davis and this is Metallica. It's difficult for me to comprehend that the only thing that you feel when you look back on the last 20 years is rooted in the Metallica thing. Okay. I'll explain in as simple terms as I can, not to stultify you, but to just make it really easy. I had nothing. Then I had everything. Then I had nothing again. And it was okay going from nothing to everything to nothing. But then having someone stand on the back of my head and keep me underwater made it even harder for me. I've been erased from any in involvement. The quotes that I was never meant to be in here anyways, I was just filling a spot, I was just a temporary guy, I was a fucking loser and a drunk, I got kicked out. All the horrible things that were said immediately after my firing. I agree, I should have been fired because I was dangerous because of my disease. But watching for so many years the band continue to become successful and successful and successful and us to never address you know, the way that, that I was let go. My God, Lars, you guys woke me up and said, you know what, you're out. And I asked you, what, no warning? I said, no second chance? And you guys said, no, go. Good God, man, I didn't get a, I didn't get a chance. And, I, and I've lived, and, and yeah, maybe, maybe for some people, you know, 18 years is a long time. 
for me it seems like yesterday I woke up and I look up and I see the guys that I love that are my extended family I gotta remember all I had was my mom all I had was you and James we had dreams together and I sold everything to join that dream and then it ended And I agree with you for doing what you did because of the nature of the disease. But don't kid yourself. I mean, I mean if it, there was ways to address, you know, what was going on, you know, with, with my problem. And who I am sober is totally different from who I am drunk. We never gave it a try. We never gave it a chance. Would it, would it have worked? As much as I loved being with you guys, I'm sure it would have. And coming down to the part about the violence, you know, if someone, if I was at a party and I saw someone hit you again, I'd break his leg again in a second. That's just my nature. I'm overprotected to the people that I love. You know, and I, every time I see Phil, you know, I feel bad for him. But I wasn't going to let him hurt you. Who's Phil? Sandoval from Armored Saint. Don't you remember me breaking his leg? I don't remember it was him. I remember yeah. the incident. I don't he, he pushed you down and he hurt you. I made sure he didn't hurt you again. And fuck with my band members. Um... I had this clear vision, which I don't know if I've ever told you, but the night where we we decided to let you go a couple of days before we let you go, and we played some show, and me and you were just sitting there, and I think we were smoking some pot and being very mellow, and I just remember I had this clear vision of just being overwhelmed with sadness and emotion about what was about to go down literally like eight hours after that. Not saying in, in any way that I was not equally responsible for being part of making that decision but at the same time feeling just an overwhelming sadness and guilt because I really felt that when all the bullshit went away a lot of the kind of the boasting and the he-man and the all that bullshit sort of went away that you were a really tender person I felt that, that you had this really tender side to you that I was really attracted to or really felt comfortable with you know what I mean and I just I think that's always been there, and um, that's why I think I sought you out. I'm not mad at you, Lars. Probably not. You know, and, and, and I, I, I don't want anything from anybody. You know, I, I still have my dreams. I'm glad that uh, James is getting help. I really am. Um, I, I wish that James was here. I wish Cliff was here.